Welcome back to your live continuing coverage of Comic Con 2015 on BeTerrific.com. You are the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. Thanks so much for watching. Oh my God, Tony D is here, and Tony D was helping us when we were throwing out prizes to the people who were unruly. I mean, this place was so packed, and I said, you know what? Let's give them something. Let's try and calm them down. But there was no calming them down. No, they're New all. Yorkers, and they're they're ravenous beast. Yeah, and uh, they're on the streets. They're roaming. Kicking people and and uh, was it quite doing that bad? Does. Was it no, that bad? No, no. I'm just they were kind of. I mean, no, they were just very kind. Yeah, it's just you know, New Yorkers are very impatient. They like right. to get places. They have things to do. Everybody in New York has 20 things to do. 20 things to do. We so should you, remind everybody who you are. You're a comic book writer. Yes, I write uh, the Web Comic Factory, and I write, of course, for Bongo Comics, which yeah. does The Simpsons. And last time I was here, I didn't have current Simpson comics. I was so disappointed. Was I not? The yes, you were. These just came out. Like these, Bart Simpson, here you go, my oh friend. Oh my God, I am Bart so Simpson, excited. Uh, 97, 98, and I got the covers. I'm happy to say my story's got the wow, covers. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Kang and Koda's story. How did you get hooked up with Bongo to write Bart? I mean, this is like, honestly, um, I, ha I interviewed uh, over the last year, I interviewed uh, Noel Lee from Monster. Um, I not only interviewed Noel Lee at Monster, who was the founder of Monster, he, he sent these headphones to us to wear. They're the most amazing headphones, the they're 24K nice. headphones for Monster. They sound amazing, they look cool, and they're comfortable, monsterproducts.com. Um, and I interviewed Noel, and that was an amazing interview. And then he makes legendary products. And then I interviewed the guy who was charged with uh, creating the newest uh, Honda Civic, designing it. And I said, that's a legendary vehicle, a legendary car line. I'm not even talking about Honda being legendary. I'm talking about the Civic, right? right. You have, with that, you have great responsibility. What is it like getting the legendary Simpsons and having to write Bart Simpson? I mean, there must be some, so much dream. pressure. It's a dream, but there it's must be so much pressure. Yeah. For me, I am the biggest Simpsons fan. I watch Simpsons all the time. Dope. Like, I have... The Simpsons, FXX now plays Simpsons right. five days a week, like 24-7, and that is on in my house constantly. And I just watch it and watch it and watch it. I love it. I can't get enough. Yeah. Um, I, I can't even imagine what it's like writing it. And, and, and so, I, I mean, what do you, what, what's the first thing that happens when you get the call? Like, hey, you, you, you write for Bongo, and now we want you to write The Simpsons. It, it's great. I, a friend of mine who I went to high school with actually yeah. got me the gig. She knew I was a comedy writer, and they were looking for writers. And so I pitched some story ideas, and you know, and, and, and they liked them, and I got in. And I've been doing it for, gosh, whew, I guess since 2006 or seven, I think, is when yeah. I first started. Um, and uh, it's great. You just you pitch the ideas, you know, and you, you, you have to stay on model as right. they say. Sure. Uh, and you have to do the same thing with the writing. Obviously, you got to pitch Simpson-esque stories. So, like, what is, what is this one about? Uh, that's Bart Simpson Skateboard Re Renegade. And the premise is that Bart uh, is watching a lot of violent video games, uh, like a sort of like a Grand Theft Auto version of Tony Hawk, and where the character on the video game, like, beats people with a skateboard and then takes off and all that kind of stuff. So Marge gets worried that he's learning all these terrible things. So she gets Homer to ban him from video games, and then he has to go find video games elsewhere, and everywhere he goes, like Noiseland Arcade is closed, that's turned into a spa. He goes to uh, Millhouse, but he has a bunch of wimpy video games. He goes to the Bullies, but the only one who has video games is Dolph, and they're all um, Hebrew, Hebrew school video games because uh, Dolph goes to Hebrew school, and so like his, his parents How don't let him come play up with this? religious ones. Hmm? How did you come up with this? It's because I watch the show so much. Like Dolph being Jewish is like kind of like a really obscure character trait with him because they've only mentioned it like maybe two episodes out of like the hundreds they've had. Yeah. And so you really got to be very obscure of be, reference. Yeah, you really got to be up on your Simpsons. Well, I'm so up on my Simpsons like I'll go to the Simpsons wiki and go, uh, I think that's wrong." <laughs> and you'll fix it. I'll fix it or I'll, you, you know, I'll email a guy to what fix did, it. What did you think of Smithers coming out? I think it was great. I, I assumed he was out, technically. I mean, it was kind of like the worst kept secret in Springfield. Um, but yeah, it was great, you know. Uh, it was good to see him, you know, finally uh, come to terms with himself and stop being in the closet. Although, you know, we all know since, gosh, way back. Yeah. Uh, you know, he had, he had um, 
relationships with John, the collectibles guy was voiced by John Waters. Sure. Uh, Mr. Largo, Lisa's uh, music teacher, and a few others on the show. I so. used to sit in uh, in high school and draw Bart Simpson's head and the eyes and the face. You know, I thought that was cool. Cowabunga, dude! How come that line went away? Right. Exactly. Where, I mean, what happened to that line? Well, it it just sort of like it went it went with the cycled out, late you know? 80s, early 90s. It went away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the show's so old. I was watching. Um, <laughs> The, oh, the, that sounded like the setup for a joke. No, no. I mean, I mean the it, show's it, so old. It's really it old. You don't realize how old it is until you start watching the shows on FX. Yeah. I was watching the one with um, Malibu Stacy. Do you remember that episode? <laughs> no. I don't know. So Malibu. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. No. <laughs> but anyhow. but if you but if you mentioned the Saved by the Bell, I probably would. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you remember in, the one where Kelly is? No, never mind. <laughs> in the episode, uh, Smithers is revealed to be like the biggest collector of Malibu Space Stacy stuff. Yeah. And he says in the episode, I'll see you at Malibu Stacy Con 94. And you're like, oh, my God, 94. That's a long time ago. You sure. know? But they're the, not dated, though, other than that, like those references. They're really they hold up. I mean, there are some political jokes, but realistically, they hold up to the test of time. Yeah, they keep it very iconic. And you do you have to do that when you write this? Do you, ha do you feel like you yeah. have to keep it kind of? Yes, yeah, especially because now how long it's lasted when they started. Maybe they didn't know. They thought, OK, a year or two years, that'd be it. But now, how long it's lasted, you got to kind of realize that, oh, this has got to stand the test of time. Yeah, you can't. I mean, look, I, I've gotten in trouble with my editors for pitching stuff that was a little too, a little too edgy or yeah. a little too political or whatever. But, you know, they, um, they keep that out uh, for good reason, because you want to keep it very iconic, very Americana. Simpson. Get me Simpson. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. He's, I think he's my favorite character some, somehow. I, I love Barney. I don't think Barney gets oh, enough Barney's air great. Time. I love him. Hi, Homer. Hi, Homer. Yeah. She left his uh, but, picture of beer. I mean, they're all great. Like, because I, I would prank call everybody. I, this has kind of come out this last week. that I, When I was younger, I would prank call everybody like Bart. And so I love Mo because Mo always falls for it. It's like, yeah, I like Mike, Mike Crotch. Yeah, is there a Mike Crotch here? Uh, Amanda Hug and Kiss? I like Amanda Hug and Kiss. Then the, the best was um, I was listening to something the other day on some other like radio program, and they did that to somebody, and I, was, I immediately thought, of course, of Bart and Mo. And, and it was amazing, and I, it was the best one I've ever heard, and I can't even remember it now. But I could not believe that they got skunked, basically. I mean, it was just like, oh my god. It was like calling up and asking for, I don't even want to say it, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it was, uh, oh, I can't remember. I don't yeah, remember. Every, every but once in a while, they get super yeah. edgy on the show, and it's great. And yeah. uh, uh, What's but the favorite one you've written? I wrote a Disco Stew story. And Disco Stew, I don't know if you remember Disco Stew. No. He's yeah, kind oh of an obscure God, character. I, I love The Simpsons, but I cannot, uh, for some reason, I don't remember every single one like you. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. So Disco Stew is the guy who's sort of trapped in the 70s. He's yeah. always he's always wearing his, like, uh, John Travolta outlet, and he's yeah. always... He's very rarely on the show. He's sort of like a window of Disco Stew where they introduced him and like kept bringing him back, but he's never had a full episode. So I did an episode where um, Homer has to help Disco Stew's disco, and he does it by bringing back all the stuff from the 70s, but he bring, brings back like the worst stuff from the 70s. You want to hear something amazing? I'm friends with Daryl Strawberry, and at this point, more people know him when we go out. They go, oh, you're Daryl Strawberry? Oh, you were on The Simpsons? They know him <laughs> more for being Daryl Strawberry from The Simpsons than they do for being world champion New York Yankee, world yeah. champion New York Met, a uh, Dodger, or a Giant. Yeah, because and he's had such a, and he had such a memorable moment on the yeah. show. I mean, that was a great Who do you episode. think is the is the most amazing moment on uh, on on the Simpsons that you remember or that you I mean, you have so many you moments. Mean, yeah. You mean the guest the guest? No, just the best moment ever on the Simpsons. Oh gosh. I really love the entire episode with Albert Brooks as Scorpio. Okay. It was the whole James uh, Bond parody where Homer oh, ends I kinda up remember working that actually. for the villain. Yeah. He's a James Bond I villain named remember Scorpio, that, yeah. but he's really nice to Homer. Yeah. And, but he's, you know, he's do a you, villain. Do you um I kind of remember that. Do we, I, I kind of feel like Marv Albert was on. Was he ever on? He's yes. Been, they've they've had. I don't know if it's him, yeah. but they've certainly made reference to him. Oh man. I mean, uh, I don't know. You know, sometimes they do voices on the show that are so close you don't know of course, if it's yeah. a real guy or, sure. if it, or if they got you know an what actual a, guest. What a brilliant uh, show! And uh, unfortunately, they just lost Sam Simon this year. Yes, that was very tragic, yeah. but. Uh, you know, he, he saw the end coming, and, and he did a lot of positive things he really, before he really passed did, away. Yes. He I really did, yes. He really did. He gave away a lot of his money, and, 
you know, he and he lasted a long time Can, after that. This is awesome. I mean, so everybody's got to go to Bongo and buy them. Where do they go? Where do they get this? Any comic book store will have them. Um, are there comic book stores around that are that easily accessible? You're like any comic book store. I feel like New York City has a few and like Chicago has a few. But I feel like if you're living in Pensacola, Florida, you're, you're, you're Googling and Amazoning this. Yeah, it's kind of tough in certain areas of the country. I live in New Jersey. It's very densely populated. We have a comic book store like five in my area. So. Really? In your area? Yeah. <laughs> where in Jersey do you live? <laughs> I live in South Jersey. I don't even live in the north part where it's densely populated. I live, yeah. I live down south near Philadelphia and down near the Pine Barrens. Okay. And we have, we have like five or six stores within driving distance of me. That's amazing. But All right, so any comic book store, Bongo Comics. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. any comic book store. And I'll look at it. this. This is The Simpsons. Can and I you go to Bongo? And, and they now have a website. I never, ever do this. I promise you. I swear. I would like this autograph to be terrific, to hang in the, in the uh, studios. Absolutely. In perpetuity. Absolutely. And I, will and I would like if you can mail me a second copy so I could read them, that would be great. Because <laughs> those will never be touched again. They will be put in I frames. I got extra. I'll give them to you. Oh, my God. Wow. You'd it's imagine. Tony D. Oh, I was giving you the we're not worthy from Wayne's <laughs> World. And you, but I'll give you the 10, the high 10. Whoa, we're the Bash Brothers right there. It's like uh, Mark and Jose. You know? You know? No? You don't get the reference? Adam Holtz knows the reference. It's Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire. Oh, 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 we just okay. went back to back. It's a sports thing, so it's I'm out. Oh, it actually would have been like this. <laughs> back to back home runs in the 80s. They, they had to have made fun of that on The Simpsons. I'm almost... Um, Holtz? Holtstein? Did they ever make fun of the Bash Brothers, Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire on The Simpsons? Yeah, McGuire, McGuire. There you yeah, go. Yeah, McGuire with the whole satellite. All right, so and the then your, your your company that you own too. You have all sorts of comics, uh, comic books. What, yes, I what, do. What is what is that called? That again? is the Web Comic Factory. Well, the Web Comic a, Factory. A little post-it yep. note. We talked a lot about that out. last year. Here we go. With the Web um, Comic Factory. Still going strong after five years. We've been on for five years, and uh, we have now twenty-six different comics. Online, yeah. Uh, we just launched a new one on Tuesday called Intergalactic Medical Doctor. Wow! And the pitch is House meets Star Trek. I love House, by the way. And then you'll love. Oh the my God! Is he snarky like House? He's totally snarky, and he and he's like this weird, quirky guy on a spaceship. Uh, where I'd love, I'd love to be the snarky guy. I'm too positive, and then if I get snarky <laughs> back there, they don't realize I'm joking, yeah, right. and they're like, "Why are you being a dick?" <laughs> well, you know, you're in New York City. It's hard to be snarky and even be noticed. That's true. <laughs> Tony D, thank you so much. Thank you. I my love friend. it. We'll be back right after this with a whole lot more. Oh my God, I cannot wait for what's next. It is so exciting, so special. Just like Tony, this will be special just for you, the Terrifics. We'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere.